Now, are we streaming on YouTube yeah. as well? Are you doing all that? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> all right. Cool. And we have attendees not coming here. So I'm yeah. not going to be able to look at the chat on YouTube. No, they're going to be in... They're gonna be in the in the thing. So let me let me make sure we're going. They're gonna be in YouTube. Yeah. I won't be able to look at that. I don't have enough screen space for everything. So all right. Yeah. Everybody's in there. So if you pop out the chat. Okay. And I'm gonna start us off this time. Yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and record it. We'll double record it. How's your allergies, by the way? Um, I went through a kind of a rough patch there, but now uh -huh. I'm good. Now I'm good. Hey, everybody. That's bad news. Okay. People are piling in. The pollen got count out here is insane. The regulars. We got a few new people. This is good. Awesome. Hey, and by the way, you guys, I... Don't have enough screen space to look at the YouTube chat. So if there's anything you want, if you want to make a comment to me, you'll have to rely on Jake relaying it to me. Yeah. I'll I'll be monitoring monitoring it. We also have uh SVS monitoring it as well. Jake has okay. no responsibilities here today. <laughs> That's kind of nice. Racky asks, where's Lee? He couldn't make it today. He's traveling. Yeah, he's traveling. He's basically doing one of our former prompts. We had a traveling prompt, and Lee decided to take it literally. So he's yeah. following the prompt. <laughs> this be good. Okay, so do we have enough people? Are we? You think we're? We should get yeah, going then. I think we're good. Okay, I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to get us going here. Okay. All right, everybody, welcome to How to Fix Your Art. This is the broadcast where we fix your art. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because all art needs to be fixed, right? And if it doesn't, then the AI created it. Isn't that right? Isn't that how it goes? Something like Even the AI art needs fixed. That's Most right. of it does. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for all your hard work that you turned in. And uh, before we get going on this, I want to show um, um, some the the past prompts. So let me go there. Um, and I'm going to hit, I'm actually going to go to the, the forum. And it's the prompt that people are working on today or that they turn their work in for today. If you're new. Mm -hmm. we, we we launched the prompt in the forums at svslearn.com. And it's Jack reached the edge of the castle tower just as the griffin was swooping. I actually have the full, the full yeah. thing right here. Hey, someone's at my door really quick. I got to I'll Go be right back. It. Yeah. Um, as the griffin was swooping, swooping low, if he missed, there would be no way he'd survive the fall. Swallowing every ounce of his courage, he leapt. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the pieces of art that were turned in. And kind of our new format is that we are looking at all the work. We're going to make comments on all the work. And um, we're going to kind of see where that takes us. Um, let's look before we get going at the next month's prompt, which... The students have already started on this. Again, if you're new, you'll probably want to start with June's prompt. But um, here is, oh, that's not the right one. Here we go. Um, here is M the May prompt, which we're going to talk about at the end. Um, actually, we're going to talk about that one now. <laughs> so this is the next month, Living Underwater. Have you ever what it's, wondered what it's like to live underwater? For your illustration this month, you need to tell a story built on the concept of living underwater. Okay, so that's where you can see um, the prompts. I will mention that we are going to be putting in 
a new tab that will say something like fix your art or um, prompt art or something like that, um, that you'll be able to just click on that without um, having to type in forward slash um, fix your art, which is that's the way you get to it now. Or you can get to it from a link from the forum, but we're going to make it easier and put a link up here on the, the homepage tab for the prompt in the future. So my, my, my advice on May prompt is anyone can, can just do a drawing of people living underwater. That's not what this is about. What we really want you to do is practice your storytelling skills. So what we really want you to do is actually ask yourself lots of questions, which will hopefully spawn ideas in your brain. Like for instance, if I were going to do this illustration of living underwater, I would start asking questions like, well, do I have a car underwater? What kind of vehicle do I get around with underwater? It could be anything. It could be some kind of a submarine that's parked in the garage. Maybe there's a garage. Maybe there's a, a house underwater and in the garage is a submarine. Or maybe, you know, do I have pets? And if I have pets underwater, do they breathe air? Do they need, do they need like a bubble over their head too? Um, what are, what are some things that you would think of in doing this one, Jake? Oh uh, yeah, you could, I mean, you could make it like a alien planet type of thing. So you could like combine different genres and be like, these aliens live underwater and here's how they build their houses. Yeah. And what I would probably do is I'm, I'm going, yeah, but I'm like, I, I don't think like Jake, cause I don't do comics and graphic <laughs> novels and stuff. I'm thinking from, from a children's book point of view, I would probably do like something, a scene that we're familiar with that we do terrestrially, but I would do it underwater. Right. So mm -hmm. I would do maybe like being late, being the, the, the classic kid being late to school and chasing down the school bus. But what would the school bus look like underwater? Right. Yeah. That's a good so idea. I'm telling a different story or well, telling a story more than what is just in the prompt. So that's what we really want you to do. Anybody. And like, again, the whole purpose of this is that you're going to create portfolio pieces that will attract art directors to want to work with you because of your ideas. And again, anybody can do a piece underwater. So that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a creative idea right. underwater. Okay. Did you ever see the snorks? Do you remember those, Will? I don't know if those were after your time. Snorks? Snorks. They're like uh -uh. underwater Smurfs. In fact, I think it was the same like company that made the Smurf animated show was like, let's do an underwater version. <laughs> oh, I never saw it. The snorks. Yeah, okay. look it up. If you guys There's don't probably know, probably some good ideas in there. Google snorks Google shirt. Uh, you Google get, search. Yeah, and you can get ideas from SpongeBob. My favorite thing they do in SpongeBob is they go to the beach underwater. Yeah. And there's waves lapping up underwater, <laughs> yep. which makes no sense, but makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we're going to dive right in because we don't have a lot of time for all these, and there are quite a few submissions. submissions so we're not going to do complete critiques on all of them. We're just going to kind of hit you with our impressions and kind of give you a little score of where we think you will line up. The first one here is from Taylor. And uh, so what we're really looking at here, we're looking for story ideas, right? Like, is the story clear? Is it being conveyed? That's probably the first thing that we're, that we're really looking for. Mm -hmm. Right. So, What do you think, Jake, on this one? Yeah, let me, uh, I actually have it on a small window. So I'm going to open it up on a big window here. And let me zoom in on this. Yeah, this is, this is really cool. Well, I remember, um, uh, I remember this art. What's this artist's name? Taylor. Taylor. I remember Taylor's, uh, Griffins from last time. And these are, these are improvement, like taking the notes that we gave. Mm -hmm. uh pretty cool so yeah this is i mean it's it tells a story this is there's good character design there's good story happening here mm -hmm. compositionally it's like there's a nice uh there's like motion and movement happening to it all the diagonals are really making it feel unsettled right so uh so i'm i'm uh i'm giving this one lots of thumbs up 
So kind of a, I think I'm going on the wrong side there. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're leaning the thumbs down on this. <laughs> oh, that's not going to work. I think I'm you gonna... have to con 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 control Z, command yeah, Z. Yeah, there we go. I'm uh, doing this for the first time over here, so bear with me, you guys. It's okay. So what what would you do to change to fix this one? Yeah, to fix this one, um I I wanna I wanna say everything looks good except that castle feels just a little phoned in. Mm -hmm. Like you ran out of design steam when it came to the castle. Um so I wouldn't I really wouldn't change the characters, I wouldn't change the trees. I wouldn't change any of that composition. I wouldn't change, but you know, if this were to be a a cover of a you know a kid's early reader book, I would think you'd you'd have to do something. You'd have to take that castle just to just to the next level. One thing to note too is um, it's hard to. It almost looks like the the farther away bit of the castle just looks like a smaller attachment to. The castle and so i kind of want to see a wall in between the two right. um turrets you know um you know I, I had a teacher one time that told me his name was Kay stevenson and he said the drawing that you do in the small areas of your of your uh image mm -hmm. are so important to convey the flavor and the feel of of the location and the, yeah. the time period <clears throat> those those little details not not that you should be putting emphasis there but it's the little drawing just the the subtleties there really make a difference and i think that's what you're talking about here mm. so okay let's move on to the next one this one's uh by grim and this one's got some really neat things going on i mean like this is the that what i'm talking about that drawing in the in the small areas in the back. Look at this little building back here. Mm -hmm. That was not phoned in. That is, there's careful attention. And one thing that you can do, especially if you're working digitally, you can draw those small areas larger and then reduce them down and throw them in the background. You know? Yeah. You can, but but you really do need to pay attention to designing those those areas in the background. There's some really good rubble happening here, some really believable ruins um and some good perspective so uh i think that uh overall you know the story's kind of predictable in a way he we're not really showing um the character leaping um so you could could make an argument that we're not really following the prompt there mm -hmm. so like and i i i get that um <clears throat> you know we give you a prompt to try to illustrate uh, my, my feeling is you really should try to stick to it as much as you can, because it will force you to learn really what it's like to get actual real world assignments. So like if I were an art director and I saw this sketch come in, I would, I would say, yeah, but the text says he, he was leaping, you know? Yeah. And so with him fighting here, like you could show pre leap and it would work mm -hmm. if, if the idea was he's going to be leaping right but right here he's he's just he's he's holding on for dear life so he can fight so there's no real leap in sight here so that and i am getting technical on that but only because i care about you and you know you being able to learn like being an illustrator is tough in that we have to we can't just draw whatever we want we have right. to draw the we have to satisfy the prompt I want to point out something right here, like this whole section here uh -huh. is I'm, it's not reading as closer to us, uh -huh. um, even though I, I kind of feel like it is because we just have this tail like going behind it. Mm -hmm. um, it actually, there's just something weird going on here in that this neither needs to be darker and less light yeah. so we can our eyes look past it or it needs to be more assimilated into the rest of the background. So yeah. that's a little weird. And then we've got like this darker part up here, and I, it makes it feel like this is a shadow of this creature on the ground, which I'm assuming this is a massive, like giant griffin. Uh, 
So there's just a, a little bit something. I It's a little bit hard to tell because of all these things, whether or not this is a massive griffin or uh, a good, like a horse-sized griffin that's close mm -hmm. to us, you know? And I think there's just some more, a little bit more, um, something needs to happen down here to make this either darker, to bring it in the foreground, or lighten this whole thing so it reads, reads more in the background. And And I would just work on that. Yeah, so there's some there's some good things happening here, and then you know we're we t as as teachers we tend to um I, I really like the coloring too and the and the rendering yeah. is nice. As a teacher, I we tend to focus on the negative only because we we overlook the positive one for time. Like we're gonna run out of time if we spend this much time on each person's. Just know that there's a lot of times where you're gonna have nice things, but we want to help you, so we're probably gonna focus on the things you're deficient in more. And we're not going to have time to compliment you on everything that you did right. The color is yep. really nice on this one. Okay, we're going to move on to Jason's here. Mm -hmm. And this is fun. I like this one a lot. I like this because I feel like it really illustrates the prompt. Yeah. Um, and I love how he put the text and in, included the text in here. He leapt. And it just, you know, and I mean, like, boom, you 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 get it right there. And this griffin is swooping in to kind of save the day. Um, I actually did a little draw over on this one um, mm -hmm. because I feel like there's some things that could happen that, that would make it a little bit stronger. And uh, so one of them is the ellipses on the castle. It's just, I'm a stickler like those. I can't remember what those things are called. The little hollow. Uh, yeah. In, in areas. I can't, I, there's a name for them. I can't turrets remember. Or, they're not sure it's they're 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 underneath you know they're they're those little these these little guys i'm right looking here. it up oh okay so yeah they need to round and that those need to go around the other thing i did on this one was i changed the the body position of jack i feel like if he jumps sideways like this he's gonna land the griffin is gonna slide under his feet taking his feet out from under him and he's gonna roll off the back of that griffin i really do believe that mechanically you have to think like you're actually doing it yourself like that's one of the hats you have to to wear in this situation is stuntman and like you know like let's say you have tom cruise now tom cruise is probably a bad example because he does most of his own stunts but uh think of somebody who who doesn't like do their own stunts like nicholas cage or somebody like that probably yeah. and like nicholas cage is doing the acting part then he's done they cut and then they throw the stunt guy in there. Well, the stunt guy is going to go, well, I see that you have me jumping right here, but if I do that, I'm going to kill myself, and here's why. So I need to rotate my body more so that I can actually be successful at landing with my feet wrapped around this griffin. So so that's kind of what I'm thinking right here. Um, yeah. Right? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Okay. I never found the name of those that part underneath, but that the the round thing is a turret. Okay. Oh, the round thing is a turret. The whole round thing, or the the part above of the tower where they stand. Yeah, that's a turret. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, anything you want to add on this one, Jake? No, that's good. Okay. For the sake of time, we're going to keep... That's, a, that's keep a really cool Griffin design, too. I'm very unconventional. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now this one by... I think it's any Hakura. Mm -hmm. um, I actually found... Let me just... Um, I'm just going to go here. I found some illustrations by um uh, an illustrator named peter reynolds when i look at these you know like like if i if i was going to come in here i would say i i can't tell what's going on without like almost like wanting to zoom in mm -hmm. and and go okay i need to be able to see this character but i can't tell enough at this level here there's so much detail and what we've really got going on here is a drawing and I don't want to go through here and give low marks on stuff because yeah. I, 
I think that there would be a lot of high marks on story and and um, in in other places. But I think what what's happening is design wise, we're missing on so many levels that it's making everything hard to read. So mm -hmm. so because we're and what we're really struggling with probably the most is is light and shadow. Yeah, I don't know why I don't. I'm not drawing. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. That's why. Helps to be on the right layer. What were the examples you're going to show? So Peter Reynolds has a similar drawing style. And it looks kind of like this. Mm. Right. And, yeah. but they're, um, so what he's doing, he's got really, it's all based on line like yours, but um, he's, he's basically, um, he's using color obviously for emphasis. So there's focal point. That's huge. Yeah. So you're using color, but you're using the same colors everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because you're using the same colors everywhere, it's like you're using no color. It's think of it like this. Think of color like this. If if you're in a crowd of children and they're all trying to get your attention at the same time, you can't hear anybody. You can't satisfy any of their needs. But if you say, you know, quiet, I want to hear from you right there. Mm -hmm. Only this person right here is going to talk. Now that's what the color is. I'm just hearing one person speaking right there. Yeah. Right. So if we're looking at this one, now he's using color for the paint, but not for the people. So it's really separating out what's going on and for the paintings, right? Mm -hmm. So he's being really careful about how he's using color. Well, and, and with value there, he's also doing lights over darks, darks over lights. So it's very right. clear. Right. We have we have a lot of value. The darkest values good catch on each one of the characters. So boom, we're not we don't care about looking over here. We don't care about what's happening right here. We don't care about, you know, only on the characters. And there's so much, so many fewer things happening in the illustrations, right? Mm -hmm. But if we look at um any's um it's there's so much texture with the drawing style and there's so so the emphasis is pretty much the same it's it looks really patterny um and we it's really hard you're, you're making us have to go is that a person there yep that is a person there it's really hard to see same right here so what i want you to do in the future is um really edit out all the things that are unnecessary in your illustrations and just simplify, simplify, simplify. I've seen your work in past um, how to fix your arts mm -hmm. and you have some really cool ideas and really cool things to share, but they're getting lost in the design. Yeah, so I feel like, I feel like they're so close yeah. to like nailing this style. And once they do like illustration, the illustration world's going to be their oyster. We're going to just be like, I, I know how to do my style. I know how to do anything I can in this style. So uh, that's like the perfect recipe for getting work. Right. And we want to start giving you really high marks on stuff, but we need we need you to tell, and I, I feel like there's the different scenes going on here. Mm -hmm. I would say you're going to do, on your next one, do one scene, right? And mm -hmm. And try to look up Peter Reynolds and try to do something as simple as this, you know, just... Or, you know, or as simple as this one, where you're you're stripping out as much as you can. And that that's really what the essence of good design is. That's one thing that uh comedians do when they rehearse jokes. They try mm -hmm. to strip out the 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 um superfluous um um details, right? And they yeah. want to get rid of those and they want to reduce it down to the essence so that they can paint a clear picture in your mind so that you can understand what they're saying so that you'll make the association in your mind so that you'll laugh. And, and that's what you've got to do with your illustration. Take out everything that's not necessary. In fact, your goal should be to get us to say, okay, you went too simple. <laughs> that really should be your goal. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's move to the next one. And this one is by... Um, Catherine. And right. so on this one, this is again, like what I'm seeing is 
and, and there's not much room to deviate um, with this prompt. It's pre, it's really specific prompt, right? Like mm -hmm. it, like the the words are telling the story. In fact, with a prompt like this, which by the way is not my favorite kind of prompt, there's not much room for for creativity because you you could get the idea of what's happening without an illustration. This could be a prompt that that doesn't in a book that doesn't even have an illustration. You can you can right. think of it in your mind, right? But okay. I would say that you do need to illustrate that prompt. And this one to me um the the character it it, it seems like it's illustrating, you know, what was what's the kid's name in the prompt? Jack. Jack. It feels like the prompt would be then Jack fell off the castle tower. Right. It doesn't look like he leapt off. Mm -hmm. I realize I do realize that you could leap and then lose control. But in this case, let's stick with with the bare essence of what there is. He leaped, which is a deliberate action. This looks like arms flailing and not like leaping. What do you think about that, Jake? No, that's a good point. That's a good point. And uh I want to say too that um aside from the the storytelling element there um i one thing i would really work on is like the perspective is just a little off with this character where this is a very difficult thing to do even for a seasoned professional to draw two characters foreshortened um and so uh we see i get what's what they're trying to do they've got the the legs really small this arm really small to like imply that um perspective is happening but it's not quite structured right it's not quite working right um and uh, i i get that the feet are coming big closer to do it so there's just some structural volumes uh volumetric problems happening here with uh with the illustration right um i want to say to that you know that could be fixed with you know a good uh, uh, understanding of basic shapes. If you did this character, uh, both these characters as cubes first, cubes and spheres first, you would really see some of the problems that we're looking at here and, and how to solve them. Um, and you're and talking way, about basic drawing construction, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to try drawing over it again with the with the tool here. You know, so you would uh, you do a sphere like this, right? And then you you draw the body as a you know as a rectangular cube, and you'd have uh, this one, you know, this arm like going off that way. But then this one would be like you know, coming forward like this, if we're in this kind of perspective uh -huh. situation, and then maybe you would just say, let's do a, a flat box for both of these uh, feet, right? And then they would be attached to some sort of, yeah, like some sort of sphere thing happening here with the, with the with the bird but then That's maybe these wings with, is it you know would be like folded up like like this like they they do have anatomy in there going on right so there's just some things that that I think would really help with this I like this character design that you've got going on for this uh uh for this griffin like it's kind of like a peregrine hawk or or falcon or something griffin which is really cool I just want to see like you know fill in these these wings a little bit don't just you know if you've if you've got this kind of amount of detail happening here you're probably going to want to have some of that detail like evenly yeah. spread across all of it you know yep thanks jake yeah all right moving um, on i'm not sure how to delete all this <laughs> there we go okay this next one is from kathleen and uh, I did a draw over on this one as well, because I feel like the the castle the um, perspective is off. So what we've got is we're we're looking up at this um, cylinder, 
but the lines are all flat. And that just shows that we're, we, we're not comfortable yet with that. Mm -hmm. This is, this perspective is working here, you know, kind of looking up is working a lot better, but this, this, um, I, I can't remember what you call it on a castle. My castle anatomy is, uh, failing me, but yeah, just call the, it a tower, a tower. Yeah. Um, so I redrew like kind of over that a little bit just to show, like, if you get mm -hmm. your ellipses, right. Um, then you can really make something look like it's going up. I also made um, Jack smaller because I feel like um, he's about the same size as the giant. It just not, we could tell the giant's a lot bigger, but as far as real estate goes on the image, I think you should take an attitude of, you know, making Jack smaller. So he's a little bit more vulnerable and then having the giant bigger. That's just mm -hmm. a pre preference for me. The other thing I did was I took the the griffin, the tiger griffin, and yeah. I want to put him all completely on the screen. Now, I'm not as good at drawing wings as Jake is, so though that's just my quick fix thrown in there, right? Is to have the have the wings going up. Um there's a lot of different positions you could put him in, but I like this one because it does show, so, you know, like story-wise, I think it's I think it's working because we can tell what's going on, right? You got, mm -hmm. you got um, this this Griffin swooping in to save the day, and I I like the position of where you put him to where, you know, it looks like the tiger is going to be able to swoop under him, and catch him. You're right. Um, and we've never seen a Griffin like that. I also changed the eyes just a little bit. You really need to make sure that that your eyes are conveying. Like right now, he definitely looks worried. Like. He might not get there in time. He might not pick up Jack, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you got that right. But then he's not looking at Jack right here. He's looking straight ahead. And right. the reason he's looking straight ahead, yes, the eyes are at the top of the head. But from that angle, that's where you would see those eyeballs if they're looking, if he's looking straight ahead. So you really need to put the eyes like going underneath the eyelid. Mm -hmm. so that you can really make him looking up and focusing on Jack so that he gets it right. Yeah. Again, the physics, the physics really make a difference. You, you, you really want to make sure that your, your audience is seeing and that every part of it is working together to, to convey the, the story that you're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. Anything mm -hmm. you want to add on that one, Jake? I would just say overall, this is sort of a note to most people overall that we've seen. Uh -huh. is you your last resort should be doing a camera angle like this yeah you know like i've done a ton of illustrations and for this one i would not have gone with like three point perspective uh you know um looking down from the ground looking up like this to be able to draw a griffin from this angle is like one of the hardest things to draw i wouldn't try it yeah. So my, my advice is if you're faced with uh, a somewhat technical and complex sort of uh, image that you get or, or storytelling that you have to do, make it as simple and easy to read as possible and put all of your love and your drawing ability and your time and attention into composition and like making sure that your character designs are um, you know, on model so that you're not like just you, you're essentially sort of crippling yourself by saying, okay, not only am I going to do it, design a castle, but now I'm going to do this castle from a worm's eye view and only see part of it. Not only am I going to do a griffin, but I'm going to do a griffin from the bottom with its head looking up, you know? Right. Uh, not only am I going to do a character jumping off, but I'm going to do it from the bottom where I have to do all of his limbs and like, foreshortened right like you're just giving yourself unneeded extra work yep okay let's move on to Jelena. before we get to the next one well did you have a, a psa you want to do or a or a little i thing do thanks for reminding me so um i just wanted to show you guys that if you're new to to what we're doing at svs i just wanted to draw your attention like if you go to svslearn.com you can uh, check out our curriculum here and 
we have a foundations program right here um, separated into levels. And you can see them just by clicking on uh, curriculum. And you can go to each class here. This how to dry everything that Jake did is one of the best classes I've ever seen to get people going on drawing. Drawing is the foundation. If you if you don't have good drawing, think of drawing as when you're building a house, it's the framing of the house. If the if the walls are crooked, if the framing is not square, if it's not done right, it doesn't matter how good a carpet you pick, it doesn't matter how good a paint you pick out, it doesn't matter how good of appliances you have, your house is going to be forever messed up because that original found um framing or drawing isn't right so this is this is my go-to class um for sending people to that are that are brand new but you can see all of our our different levels here and all these classes are really important to make you a well-rounded illustrator um and so um i just want to point to that and i don't want to spend a lot of time on that but um, we have all those levels. And so, yeah, check that out now back to how to fix your art. Yeah. So here we go on Jelena's. Uh, again, this one is a very difficult angle to, to choose to do. And for the angle, I would say you did a pretty good job. Um, but there's some things we could do better. You know, the silhouette of a character that's in motion, that it's in action, that's that dynamic needs to be, um, it needs to be really clear and legible. So the fewer things you have foreshortening, the better. So you have this foot right here that's really foreshortened this leg. I wouldn't also do it with this one coming out forward. What I would do is I'd bring it back. And here's, here's you're going to see some bad drawing here. I just threw that on there really quick. I would put that leg back there. What would you do with that one, Jake? Would you do it like that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and that makes a nice silhouette too. Yeah. And th and that way it's it's more legible. And when we say legible, it's at a quick glance you can your brain can understand exactly what's happening quickly. You never want to give your viewer an assignment to to decode what you're doing. And this leg in here yeah, we can figure out what that is over time. You don't have that kind of time with an art director. If they see anything wonky, at first it looks like he's missing a leg. Then you go, oh, wait, there's the leg right there. Never mind, he's not missing a leg. You never want to do that to your viewer. Um, as far as the griffin, I tried redrawing it here, and I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been an illustrator for over 30 years. I can't do it from that angle. Um, without, and also you don't want to ever put a butt in your viewer's face, you know? Um, so I would, I would totally choose a different angle. The other thing is mechanically, this can't work because the Griffith Griffin can't come. Like if this is the castle wall here, where did he come from to swoop out from that direction? Yeah. Right. He can't, it, he can't, it can't work. He, he has to come from the side, either one side or the other. Or he has to be coming in straight in down low, right in like like much smaller coming swooping down through here, and you right. can even show the trail that he came from his flight path, where this guy's going to meet up with him off you know down here off camera somewhere. You could do that. Um, I tried flipping it and having him come from the side, but his wing is so big it would have been scraping the side of the castle, right. Mm -hmm. so it's a it's a it's a really tough angle to show you did a really good job on this character other than the leg really nice drawing in here so i give high marks for that the griffin though is really like this is just a crazy tough angle um a griffin is hard to draw to begin with <laughs> right right so you need to I, I if i were doing this illustration i probably figure out what angle I'm capable of drawing a griffin flying in. And I'd probably start there with designing how Jack is going to leap onto it. Can I, um, I just did a quick sketch while we were talking. You want to share your screen? Yeah. Cause people are like, well, what, how would you do it, Jake? Would you just do a side view? So do I need to make you host? No, I, I already made myself host. You can, um, you can just do that. So here's my quick sketch. And 
you could see we've got it's a side view there's no really hard angles this is a very clear silhouette of the character if anything my griffin is in kind of a weird hard pose but it emphasizes the griffin's face not the butt <laughs> you know right. not the butt of the griffin we got the wing spread you know i can i can show the griffin's like front eagle paws there but show the back you know lion thing and then there's room here for like landscape stuff so you could like build out the world a little bit and have some cool um uh clouds and whatnot but you could see here this is not a this is not a weird awkward hard angle but it looks i think looks really cool it does because then you're getting that leap really good how many if you were tasked with coming up with as many angles as possible to do this from that are good angles that you could take to finish how many do you think you could come up with me 10 okay what but none of them would be some of the ones we've seen right like i you know i might try uh, a few like little thumbnails of like i wouldn't do top view i'd mostly do bottom view looking up uh -huh. um but even then i i'd you know, I'd scratch that pretty quick when I realized. So I'd have to draw a griffin from, from right. the bottom view. So straight on, even though it it's not yeah. as dynamic, maybe it's really expressive. Mm -hmm. It's really graphic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Super graphic. Okay, great. Okay, let's stop. And then let's see. I need to share back again. Okay. So... Moving on, we're going to look at uh, Anne Marie's. And uh, so let me make sure I get the whole thing in here. There we go. Yeah. Um, so this one is really a strong force perspective. Again, I, I wouldn't pick this angle just because it's so difficult to pull off. These these legs without doing a draw over on them, they're, they're, they're looking like they're really – flat against the body and not really foreshortened to draw those legs you you'd almost like to do it right you really need one of those feet in your face right mm -hmm. so like the foot is like one of the biggest things you're seeing with these big huge claws and i'm talking like taking up the whole lower portion of the screen at that size because what you're doing now is you're in order to get them all in there you're you're having to flatten them up to the body and that's not how it would would actually be i actually actually did a little tiny draw over on jack too just to pull him off of there if you can see mm -hmm. that um yeah. for that tangent there just kind of moved him it, there's no reason to have him being overlapped right here that right. kind of overlapping is is only is, is not helpful i don't think he even he should i think he should be up in that open space in the sky he shouldn't yeah. even be overlapping with the tower i agree yep Put him in the sky. Anytime you make it clean like that, it's there's no question that they're in the air falling. Um, but really nice drawing on the castle. Some really nice attention to detail there and a really dynamic angle. Um, and, you know, oh, I, I need to tell you guys this story really quick. I, I did um, everything that I drew when I was in college in my illustration program. I was going for a BFA in illustration and everything that I did was like this. Okay. And it would frustrate me that the person that did the drawing, like Jake, the straight on would always get the, the higher marks. And, and I always felt that they weren't as good an illustrator as I was, <laughs> you know, they weren't as advanced. Right. And so I was getting these like C's and D's on my, my art and that my, my, my professors were like finding all kinds of problems. And I'm thinking this is an amazing angle though. You know, like I'm going to win this war with this amazing, crazy worm's eye view angle or or bird's eye view angle or foreshortening and stuff. Yeah. And I could I could never understand what my teachers were trying to tell me. And they're like, the, you know, they'd see one of these other guys and they, they were usually going into graphic design and they do a drawing like Jake just did with the straight on, you know, Jack jumping off from profile. I'm like, that's so basic. It's so easy. Anybody could do that. Well... Not anybody can do it because most of us illustrators want to like go nuts and try to do the impossible half court shot, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think too, if you look at like films, have you ever watched like recently watched something like um uh Polar Express? Like that camera never ever stays still that entire movie. Uh -huh. And it's just flying around and it's going through every you know, and when we first saw that movie, it was like, Oh, this is cool. Look at everything you could do moving the camera around because right. of CG now. And audience much. is just exhaust exhausted yeah. by it. <laughs> yeah. Just, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. Yeah. All right. We're gonna move on to Gabriel. This one I really like the the silhouette here. Um like that is a great silhouette jumping through the air, a great yeah. uh, expression on the face. Um, you know, there's there's like this urgency to make the jump to safety. Um, really good um, um, light and shadow, right? Or at least composition. Mm -hmm. um, so I would give, give high marks for that um, on light and shadow. Composition wise, I would I, I see a problem here with this Griffin being kind of forced into the top of the illustration and and with the tangent that's right here. Yeah. Um, it, there's that really like this illustration would be better if there were no Griffin in there. Then it would be like a perfect illustration. Right. <laughs> other than um, there, there are other problems. It, it looks the finish on this. So if we go rendering, I'm going to go lower. And the finish on this is lower because um, there's not good detail in areas that really need good detail. So you can go really loose in your style, but when you show hands, you know, they need to be right. Yeah, you got to dial that in. What's that? Got to dial that in. Yeah, I'm not saying they have to be like you have to go crazy drawing the hands, but the, but the silhouette of the hand needs to feel more a little more accurate than these um because they're those that's where we look we look at heads and hands same thing with the head on this um it's just not mm -hmm. not finished to the the level that it needs to be finished to and i would say the same thing on on jack here um the feet you know the the feet are kind of just suggestions of a foot but that's really what we look at so you need to you need to really decide a little bit more like is he wearing boots is he wearing shoes is he barefoot we need to know we can't tell from the drawing here so yeah um i think technically like if this was done on a twice as big canvas you could get in there and get that detail in there but it seems yeah. it feels like it's pretty small little square that they're illustrating and it's just hard to get that detail yeah and detail you need for something like this and I don't know what this is right here. I think that's the balloon. That's kind of what I thought, but it's it's not going to work if that's the balloons. Yeah, it's this nowhere... honestly, it's cropped a little too tight. I know Lee says, you know, cropping can solve a lot of problems, but in this case, I think it's cropped a little too tight. Well, and mechanically, it's not going to work at that size. It's just not big enough. And so, yeah. Let's so anyway, magic. lovely atmospheric perspective back here. So some really nice things working on this one. Um, let's go to melodies. And so we've got the we've got the castle down here. We've got the griffins swooping through. I'm not seeing Jack leaping. So again, for for this one, you know, really looking for you guys to to illustrate the prompt mm -hmm. um, to its fullness. And so I don't really understand the money bag you know um whenever i see something like this that's blatantly not the prompt i always wonder oh they had a picture of a griffin and they're like i'll just sneak this in and maybe it'll maybe it'll you know it'll count as me doing a drawing for this because why would you not why would you not do the prompt right right that's the first thing we're going to say is you didn't do the prompt yeah <laughs> We understand that you, can, that you can do whatever you want, but we're we're here to help you become illustrators, and mm -hmm. we take that pretty seriously. So, yeah, we really want you to follow the prompt as closely as you can. Again, writing a story beyond the prompt, but that also satisfies the prompt. So, um, 
So anyway, yeah. And th- this is another forced perspective view where it's coming straight on. It's really difficult. It's just such a difficult angle to really show the body and what's happening back yeah. there. So I, we I would do, hurt. with this one and, and when I've had assignments like these, I start with what's the coolest pose for for the griffin? You know, what's the coolest pose for the coolest character mm-hmm. in here? And then build an illustration around that. Mm-hmm. And if it's a side view for this character, then you know, then I'm gonna try and and um compose the illustration around that side view. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't after I drew like a hundred T Rexes that I felt comfortable to do like a uh low angle looking up from the back view of the T Rex. Mm. And only then was I able to do it because I had a T Rex toy model and I was <laughs> like drawing from reference. <laughs> I couldn't right. come up with that without without reference right so you got and i I gotta say too like you know some people like well there's there wasn't a griffin i couldn't find a picture of a griffin in the pose that i needed to do i have gotten out my needed eraser cut cut out of paper like paper wings and sculpted a little miniature version of the the dragon or the griffin or the animal that i needed to do and then you know either using my phone or just looking at it with one eye posed it the way I needed it to and use that as reference so I could figure out how the wings are supposed to foreshorten mm-hmm. or how this character is supposed to look from this angle. You know, we're not magicians uh, and, and that is a, a perfectly legitimate cheat to get you to where you need to do to to make this illustration happen. So don't feel like you have to like come up with things whole cloth, you know, out of your brain. Use whatever means you have at your disposal to do it. Yeah. Same with Vehicles. I I came up with a complex vehicle spaceship for one of my comics, and I was like, "This is going to be a pain in the butt to try and illustrate it from a hundred different angles." So I modeled it in Blender, a very like basic model for it, and then I just screenshotted it from all the different angles and traced over it. You know, mm-hmm. and that's how I was able to do that spaceship so consistently. Great. All right, moving on. We're gonna hit. Uh... I think this is Christians. Um, okay, so we definitely have Jack jumping. We're taking it from the uh, standpoint that this is the Jack and the Beanstalk uh, idea. Only we got a Griffin in here, and uh, I think that on this one, the main thing is just for me. The main thing is trying to get that Griffin drawn in a really compelling pose and it's tough like yeah. just so you guys know i would have hated this assignment because i i i don't like the way griffins look even when they're drawn well <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a fan of the griffin it's but pretty yeah what i would do though is like 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 to me the the back end of that griffin is just so heavy and it doesn't feel like like it's being like it's it's not dangling like a bird dangles from its wings. Is that mm-hmm. does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So it need it really needs to be um, feeling like the lower part, the back end is to me is kind of dangling down. And again, this is tough because you're drawing something that doesn't exist. So like like Jake said, it's really hard to find reference on something like yeah. that. Did you ever see Rice Screws Down Under? I did. You remember um, Marahute, the big golden eagle? Uh-huh. Like, for this assignment, that's where I would start uh, with my Griffin design. If you... It, let me just share my screen really quick. Yeah. Let's see here. Is that showing up? Not yet unshare yours see if see if that does it there you go yeah so you know you look at here's we got a griffin with its head turned you just have to add a a lion body at the back Mm -hmm. here we have a top view of a griffin you just have to add a lion body in the back here we have a griffin flying towards you foreshorting with the with the feet coming forward you just have to add a lion in the back of it right Mm -hmm. you know 
Like this is where I would go. This I think looks, you know, some of these are really great poses where I would start with my Griffith design and just add the line in the back. Look how the wings are ap approached. You got the light yellow, the medium, and then the, the mm -hmm. dark, you know, umber. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you want to be looking at for for reference when you're um, when you're doing these these Griffin designs or these flying designs. You don't have to come up with it out of nowhere. Um, so, I would absolutely be building a, a mood board for this piece that has you know dozen Griffin or dozen Marahute pictures on it. You know some Griffin designs um, from other illustrators some compositions of uh, other similar looking like compositions that I want. And then mm -hmm. I'd be puzzle piecing it all together to make, to make my illustration. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Next so, prompt's going to be a kangaroo. The what now? The, the, in the <laughs> chat, they're, they're saying <laughs> Griffins are tough like kangaroos. And then the next prompts, we're going to mention kangaroos. That's, yeah. that's going to be a, uh, so a few other things on this is is um I think in order to to really sell the giant beanstalk you need to go a little further with the design of it put some leaves on there perhaps um but instead of like you know they look like green noodles or green tentacles or something they're not there's not really much there to tell us beanstalk other than if we see a castle and a big, huge green mm -hmm. thing like this, we kind of figure out that it's the beanstalk, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing, too. Like, I would have, if I was doing a beanstalk, I would have five images of beanstalks on my mood board mm -hmm. that I'm referencing. And it would be illustrated beanstalks. Like, um, Scott Gustafson did a really good one. Mm -hmm. Um It'd be actual photos of beanstalks and just like you, you can't create in a vacuum. I think yeah. like my main message here. You got to. You, you can simplify it. You don't have to do a Scott Gustafson right. type drawing, but you, we need more. We need a little bit more to tell us that that's a beanstalk. Um, and yeah. And then in the background, again, like I mentioned, really good drawing. So the the drawing back here is is really quickly done, and I think in order to really sell that this is a landscape back there, would maybe indicate some rows of of farming, like you're already indicating like the squares of different farming plots. But I think you need to go just a little bit further and show us maybe some trees and some some like I said some farming, um, maybe even some some little houses and stuff back there so we understand. A little bit more about where we are mm -hmm. and it, it kind of just looks like a patchwork quilt yep a little bit we're okay. an hour into this yeah i'm gonna go fast I, here we go i just gotta say oh. um jonathan's the first one to mention your your clean shaven chin <laughs> oh, that's right everyone's wondering why will looks 20 <laughs> years younger <laughs> <laughs> Yep, went with a clean chin. Baby face will. Get used to it, you guys. Um, you while you're bringing up that next image, someone asked what a mood board is. So a mood board is something I think started by like ad agencies, um, maybe in concept art too, where you put together like a board. It, it, you know, it could be physical. I just do them. I just do a Photoshop document where I just kind of paste together bunch of cool images that I found that match the mood that I'm going for. And if, if I were to like mix all of them together, that would be the piece that I'm going to make. Right. Okay. This one's uh, Jim Gleason's uh, definitely a friend of ours, a friend of the show and um, some real fun things happening on this one. It's kind of taking it into the futuristic like castle realm. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Um, But I don't see him really illustrating the prompt again we're not leaping we're clinging on and i'm sure that everybody has a, a reason Here, here's one thing that i've told my students in the past like i'm going to give you an assignment i'm going to expect you to satisfy the assignment this is when i was teaching at university mm -hmm. I, I expect you to f satisfy the assignment i'm going to grade you based on whether you do the assignment or not 
But if you tell a different story that's just a, an amazing illustration, and it's just a, it's not the really the prompt, but but it's another really creative idea and a really good story. I'm gonna I'm gonna break my own rules and give you an A. I'll still give you an A, but your chances of that are really slim that I'm gonna give you an A. Mm -hmm. Right? It has you better nail it. So, on on this one, I think it's we're, we're we can not change really the words too. yeah um and and so the griffin's trying to get him i think there's more you could do here jim as far as telling a compelling story other than just a griffin trying to get the kid um i don't know what do you think jake um i yeah i i i think this is a very ambitious piece i like the the thought of a mechanical beanstalk type of thing or or futuristic tower i think there's some cool stuff here with like an alien griffin um um but i i want i think it is cropped a little tight and that griffin does look looks like it's attacking jack instead of saving rescuing him mm -hmm. um so just a couple you know that it, it looks angry and i don't know if that was the intent or not part of it is the strong brow the angular brow mm -hmm. i think you know so if it's not we need to see him smiling and it's it's funny because it's not easy to make a beak look like it's smiling because it curves down right right but if it's a friendly griffin like what having a claw out there like that and looking angry with a mouth open with a sharp pointy beak it looks like it's going to basically tear him up right yeah if it, if it gets him he's he's a goner so if that's not the intent we need to make the intent really clear that it's a friendly griffin with you know not a claw coming out not a beak open mouth beak coming at him right and in an angry again i want to see the thing swooping not attacking <laughs> mm -hmm. so good things go though with the color and some like i said some really fun designs and stuff like that okay we're moving on here to marks and this is mark robinson this is this is just a really 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 nice piece super wow. nice piece that's cool yeah um and he did change the assignment so this is an example of someone who took the prompt and is actually in my opinion really satisfying that prompt but wrote their own words to tell their own story. Just, yeah. It's actually satisfying both. Yeah. Um, there's only one thing that I, I thought of doing on this, like, like see, you, you see this amazing pose of the Griffin coming mm -hmm. through to, to, to swoop in to save and it's silhouetted against this, this perfectly light background. So you have dark on light, very graphic. This yeah. is, this is the, I mean, this is the example of of what you guys are should be trying to do right here. Mm -hmm. I this think isn't that a we're, complex angle. We're talking about all high marks on this one. I the only thing I would do differently is I would silhouette those guys at the top. Oh, and just heart rim light them, huh? They're yeah, they're baddies. So I I don't know. That's me. What do you think? Unless they're that? like supposed to be energy creatures. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> yeah that's a good point um also the the griffin just looks like a bird um so you, it needs to have the silhouette of like the legs come the four legs coming down i think good point good point so the long tail as far as story goes we have to knock you down a notch there for that right what I'm just knocking them down a little bit over there. Yeah, one one about. notch. <laughs> we want we want a little a back end of a lion or something on there, right? Yeah, this is amazing stuff right through here, though. This this is this composition is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So and it's funny too. Yeah, give us the N Nintendo sixty four, and I give you my word, make your death quick. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, uh, next one is phase. How many this more is, do we got? 
Um, we've got after this, we have four more. Okay. Um, so this is one where she changed the the words again to kind of meet her own um mm -hmm. assignment. Well, remember the book cover from the last one where the dog was supposed to be dressed up like a griffin? Yeah. Yeah, so it definitely took our notes and got something good going on here. Yeah. Yep. So there's some fun things happening here. Um looks like you know, we're we're dealing with these ruled pages, so it's like a it's like an imaginary story, I think, that's coming to life. That's what I'm reading. Is that what you're reading, Jake? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh the kid riding on the back of this dog slash griffin what 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 would you do differently on the drawing to to make this uh, a little bit better um i would say there's you don't everything's so overlappy that like you could take the tree and the picnic table make them a little bit smaller move them to their so they're both like on the left hand side of the page and just so you put the tree over here more. yeah and just have it have a really clear silhouette around the dog griffin you'd get rid of well i'm drawing with a mouse right now <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your cintiq well my cintiq is not the right proportion it's the square proportion oh it doesn't show this very well yeah i so gotcha i can't really i can't really do much here <laughs> nerfed poor mouse well i could do it on my Cintiq, but we'll have to change the the. Nah, don't worry, about it. we get we get the point. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, nice job on this one. And but, but I, I that that notebook paper again, such a cool idea to like show off the imagination. Mm -hmm. Well, if you were redrawing drawing over this dog, what would you add in there detail wise, or what would you fix? Oh, I. You know. You could you could tighten up like this the overall the overall dog design is just a little blobby like you could have some more thicks and thins like the tail is a little bit thinner on one end and thicker on the other uh -huh. um, details like the the paws and so just coming down to nubs but like have individual paw yeah toes I guess that's what I was seeing yeah same with the hands on the boy let's see some fingers instead of just um, you know mitten yeah um and then anything you can do to make it even more like readable as a as a cl clean silhouette so don't have the wing like obscuring both of the legs you know so we could still see that it's the outline of a dog but then there's there's some um elements that give it this griffin feel to it yeah okay Cool. Okay, so then we've got LaRue's next. And on this one, Jack is a mouse or a rat. That's cool. And uh, we have kind of an owl griffin yeah. feature out there. Got a net to catch. Yeah. And this this again is just this is just such a hard angle to pull to pull off. It's just, you know, it's just my gosh, it's so tough. One thing that would really help your um, s sell the fact that that there's a real huge distance that we're up really high is to make that background super light. So right now you have the the Griffin light on a dark background. I would completely reverse that. I would make the owl dark on a light background. I'd make Jack dark on a light background. So just just look in the distance if you go outside. And you'll see that uh, the further away you look, everything gets lighter. It, it gets it gets lighter in value. The colors wash out of it, and the, the edges blur. So you have those three things that happen, right? Mm -hmm. And and you're not taking advantage of those. So when you when you're drawing your your when you're making your images here, the more things you can mimic, because again, like when you're drawing a picture, it's it's not. It's not really happening. It's not real life. But what we're doing is we're trying to fake out our viewer with our techniques as illustrators and make them, we're trying to put them in a world where they can, where we're giving them visual clues to where 
we we tell their mind what to think. But what you're telling the mind to think on this one is that that ground is just a few feet away because it's the same values as the darks up here. Mm -hmm. So there's no difference there. So there's not, it's, it's not distant. We need to, in fact, what we do as illustrators is we exaggerate those things that happen naturally in nature, right? So if, if things get a little bit lighter, like let's say we're 50 feet or 75 feet up, up high here. And we would, we, we, let's say we went to a castle and we took a picture uh, looking from the top of the castle and we measured the values and we said, well, the, the values of, of the stones and rocks up here are, are darker for sure. The, the ground is lighter by 10 or 20%. As an illustrator, I'm going to make it lighter by 30 or 40%. You know, I'm going to double it. Yeah. And, and try and really exaggerate those things and make lines blurry. These lines down here are really crisp. I'm going to, I'm going to do what we do with, with a camera. When you take a picture, the depth of field, you have things in the foreground are crisp and clean. And as they go back, they fade and get blurry. That's going to, that's going to also tell distance. So I probably spent more time than I should on that, but <laughs> that's one thing to, to really help. Um, anything you want to add on this one, as far as, uh, helping convey the 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 story i'm uh i'm trying to do a, a quick redraw of okay. how i might do this do you want and... me to go to the next one while you're still drawing yeah okay so i'm gonna move on we're gonna come back to larue's this one is my glasses my eyes are so bad now i cannot read the name i'm sorry um I need to get another pair of glasses to throw that's, on here. Don't get old, folks. That's uh, that's our, on, on our my message from there. today. Oana. I think it's Oana. Okay. So this is kind of fun. Uh, really expressive line work, really energetic line work. Uh, really kind of in that cartoony realm in style-wise. And uh, we've got kind of the aftermath where... Jack has leapt, grabbed a hold of the griffin's tail, and the griffin is is struggling to fly. I think this is a funny take uh, because we expect the griffin to be big and bold, and in this case, it's not much bigger than Jack, and so really weighing Jack down, and maybe mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to get away from the archer's arrows. I One thing I would do on this one, I would send a few arrows in in the sky, going past, you know, to make it more um, immediate that they're trying to get away, that they don't get shot. You know, having one maybe even just grazing the griffin's head or something, you know, um, taking some feathers off or something too. Right, you know? yeah. Um, anything you can do to kind of sell that idea. Um, and, uh, but I think pose-wise and drawing-wise, this is really, really working. It's really conveying that the Griffin's uh, back end is being pulled down, and from the gravity of Jack, and that that's that's a fun thing to convey and express. Um, do you have anything you want to say on this one, Jake? No, but I'm gonna share my uh, share my drawing really quick. Okay. Uh, is that showing up? Yep. So you could see here, just just in my sketch, how just by paying attention to value at this early, even at this early stage, mm -hmm. you could clearly see, um, you could see the 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 atmosphere, right? Of, yeah. of things. I can go in here now, and now that I've got like some light atmosphere there i can go in and just add a little detail thinner lines you know to kind of imply yep. that there's some stuff going on on here and then we've got mountains and hills going off in the distance back there a little bit mm -hmm. i like but, it but clear silhouette for the main things and that's the ledge the the rat 
And then the second read is the owl. The owl has a nice clear silhouette as well. And it's swooping in to catch. Mm -hmm. I was looking up. So I got this at like a three quarter looking up view. So it's, it's not a hard angle to draw this guy. And then this is a pretty much easy angle to draw from the top view there. Yeah, I think I like that. I think that the whole idea of holding onto a net, can I go back to mine? That's yeah, yeah. Nice draw over Jake. That's exactly what I was talking about. Um, the, the holding up the net is just, that net is so small um, that I don't think that we're going to, you're going to be able to convey that, that the mouse is going to be able to get into it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other mouse is already on top of the head. So I think that's where, where you want this, the Jack mouse to be is on the back or on the head. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. My main thing though, is if you can't get it working, you know, in a, in a 10 minute thumbnail, it's not, you're not going to fix it by adding more detail and adding more color right. and adding more. <laughs> you got to get it working in, in a, in a silhouetted D, um, yeah. thumbnail or comp version. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So then did you have anything you wanted to add on, on uh, LaRue's? No. Or on oh, you, you did a good one. Okay. And then on Sarah's here, um, again, we're, we're rewriting the prompt and, you know, I don't, maybe it's unfair to some of you guys, cause we really haven't emphasized really following the prompt before, but I, I feel like you guys should really follow it for reasons I already mentioned. If you're coming late, we're trying to train people to become professional illustrators. And then the big difference between fine art and illustration is, yep. When you're an illustrator, you are given a specific assignment. And if you do not um, satisfy that assignment, your art director is going to ask you to to draw to, to try again. And time is money, and you don't want to spend your valuable time and more importantly, your emotional effort putting your heart and soul into something, and that only to be told you didn't follow the words. And that's happened to me in the beginning. I I learned that pretty quick, and it was, you know, it's it, it's it's painful because you start to fall in love with the thing that you put in all your time and effort and and hard into only to find out that you didn't hit the mark. Right? right. So this is, there's some really fun things happening on this one. Um, you know, um, some really nice colors and, uh, some nice light and shadow and, and, uh, you know, these guys running and coming out. Um, and, uh, th there's some drawing problems with like shadows with the, like the shadows of these trees um, your shadows are going to elongate. Even the the palm fronds are going to are going to tend to. From this tree right here, they would come clear, probably off the page. Um, and uh, um, that's a little thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there's some there's some uh, definitely some foreshortening problems with with the the rocks here going down to the water. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like, if you're going to go that extreme with um, the perspective at the bottom, you probably need to do that with the perspective in the top. Yeah. And I get we're at like a, we're doing like a spherical perspective. Like how many points perspective is that? It's when you right. do like fisheye view, right? Right. And at that point, what, what's throwing us off are these rocks down here, mm -hmm. which we're seeing from the side, but we really need to be seeing them from the top, looking yeah. straight down on them. Um, that's really what's kind of throwing that off there. Yeah. And, you know, that's always a really tough thing to do because rocks are organic and because they don't have a specific structure to just be able to have rocks down there is really tough. One thing that would be really helpful is to show for perspective would be to show a boat in the actual like looking right at the top of that boat you know because yeah. everyone knows what a boat is and if we're looking straight down on top of that boat it's going to help sell that angle right um, i really think this is another one you've got really cool idea of uh jack's still in the treasure he's getting chased by uh pirate um skeletons the the griffin is a monkey uh parrot it's mm -hmm. on a on an island. You've got a cliff. 
all these elements are like awesome. Yes, this is really cool. But then this is the worst camera angle. Like this is the worst vantage point to to showcase this. Right. You don't have to complicate it with with the with the view. Just the simplest as possible is often the best solution. So again, side view, um, silhouettes of skeletons chasing. Jack is midair jumping off a cliff. Griffin swooping in underneath. Yeah, you like what I would what element. I would want to see is more of this down here, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and with him like starting to to gather himself to leap or already leaping right here. Yeah. So in other words, we have illustration way down on the right and below, yeah. and to see this Griffin bigger but coming from the from this side over here from the right side mm -hmm. and then it creates tension like did he get the timing right you know is he going to be right. is he jumping too soon is he jumping too late is he going to make it but right now this this griffin we're not thinking that that griffin's going to be able to do anything because at that distance we can't really even tell what size it is right yeah Okay, and then we're going to move on to our last one by, and I need to move this up on my other screen to see it, Natasha. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and this one we have two illustrations, um, <laughs> which is really... It's a comic. It's really fun, yeah. Um, and um, so... You got the maybe. Amblin Entertainment... You know, jumping in front of the moon, um, and you know that's that's part A and part B is didn't quite catch him, right? <laughs> and, and the knight broke every bone in his body, and so did the griffin, right? The uh, griffin broke an arm too. Yeah, broke some yeah. broke some stuff. So, what would we do here? Um, so. This one's tough in that you're using line to define everything, but you really need to get, I think it's, it makes for a stronger illustration in general, if you use value to separate planes. So when mm -hmm. you get to the white background here, you have white on white mm -hmm. and we, but we have, we're really heavily relying on the line, but then in the rest of the Griffin, we're, we're really strongly dark on light. And mm -hmm. what you really need to, what you really want to do is design it so that it just works in a silhouette and you can do that in lighting. So in the way that you light something, even something white like this bandaged up arm, um, it is, um, uh, can be darker and function as a, as part of a dark silhouette if you get your lighting right. If you light it from the right spot so that the, this part falls into shadow and maybe there's some some backlighting that that will light the whole thing. So so that's that's one thing to, to think about there. Yeah. Um I, I gotta say the silhouette and the moon, like that's really expertly done. Yeah. To show that the character like these are these are not easy poses, but to show that character like jumping to catch. And the knight is in a, you know, like a ballerina jumping pose. I think the top panel would, would, I just feel like it's cropped a little too tight. And I want to see where the, a little bit more clearly where the knight is jumping from. Um, because you got the mirrored images of both the, the towers on either side. Uh, and I feel like it should favor one or the other, you know? Yeah. The other thing is, I think if, if someone were just looking at this, they wouldn't understand what they're actually seeing. Um, well, I mean, as a standalone thing, I think if it was in a comic, like if this was the final page for a five-page comic, they'd get it. However, look at... Now, this is my problem with it, the scale. So we have like a normal hospital room with a bed and a guy on it. Are we yeah. saying that the the people in the castle are that small? You know, are that are they tiny people? Right. Yeah. Or are they, are they far far away? Yeah. So that's why I'm I'm struggling yeah, yeah. with the scale. 
the the other thing is we don't really see where they're leaping off from. I think it's a cool idea to silhouette them over the moon. Like it's this amazing mm-hmm. like moment, right? And we've seen that in different movies where, you know, like I'm thinking of like um, you know, Santa and the and the reindeer in Christmas Vacation, if you've seen that with Chevy Chase. Right. When he when that when the um everything blows up at the end, right? And mm-hmm. and the 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 fake Santa lawn ornaments go blowing up in the air and he puts them in front of the moon right at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. If I'm remembering the right movie. I think um, so. It's a really cool idea to silhouette in front of the moon, but we had the context of film to show, you know, first this happens, second, this happens third. Oh, they're going in front of the moon. And in this case, we don't, so we don't see where they leapt from and we don't understand why the the other people on the castle are so tiny. So I think that's something that's being left out that's making this tough to to understand for me. Mm-hmm. Yep. But a very creative griffin, probably the most creative one where you have a toucan bird and a snake tail. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah, pretty. Fun. I love it. Love the design. Yeah. Okay, that's it for this week's critique arena. However, please stay tuned because in the after show here we have. Whoops, let me get this up here. Um, we have, we have the the June prompt that we want to look at. And that's, I think, the last thing we want to do today. And that is <laughs> Godzilla, the children's book. Okay, so this month. So this is the one that if you're going to do start on one and you haven't done one before, this is the one that I would start on is June's. Okay, because we're, we're, people have already started working on May's and they're due May 1st. So there's only a few weeks left for the May one. You can still do the May one if you want to, but they're due May first. Mm-hmm. So this one's due June first. So you have two. You have six weeks to get this one done. Uh, designing the front cover of a book about Godzilla for children. Be creative, have fun, and come up with something unexpected. Remember that story is king. Any size of illustration will work. But remember, this is for the cover of a children's book. Have fun designing the book title. So if it were me, I would. I would design a Godzilla that's child friendly that looks like a I wouldn't do the really scary comic book version. I would do one that would fit the children's book world. If I were an art director and I saw an image like this coming in um where Godzilla is a creature in a children's book, it would immediately perk my interest. Yeah. Because it's out of context, right? There's about 15 of you right now thinking about what you're going to do, and you're going to be tempted to do a worm's eye view, three point perspective, all these skyscrapers going up, and a giant uh, Godzilla foot in in foreshadowing coming down towards you. Don't, don't, don't do that image. <laughs> Yeah. Remember the lessons we pulled from today. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Yeah. If you can do the cutest, coolest looking Godzilla, uh, start there and then build an illustration around it, and you're going to be so much better. And for Pete's sake, start working right now on your yeah. mood board for this. Yeah. Putting together all the reference, all the cool images that you're going to get, you want to meld together to make this to make this drawing. And write your own story first before you start. This is a chance to write. Who is your Godzilla character? Is it actually a baby Godzilla? Is it metaphorical or, you know, is it could it be a child that's dressed up as Godzilla? Mm-hmm. That you know, could it be a dog or could you know you know, what is your Godzilla? Is it a is it a robot? It could be anything, but don't just yeah, I mean, like, don't just hit on the first idea that you come with and then write a story of, like, why is Godzilla in a children's book? What's the angle? What is, is Godzilla good or bad? Is, um, what's the location? Is it in a house? Is it, 
you know, at a park, is it where, and also I would ask myself, and this, this is after, you know, having many, many years as an illustrator, I ask myself, what do I want to draw? Because a lot of times my students will go into an assignment, they'll draw what they think the teacher wants to see, and they hate the illustration that they're working on, and they don't even want to finish it. They don't want to put their heart into it. These prompts are open enough that you can do anything you want as long as you're staying with it in the confines of the prompt. But you, this is a real chance for you to exercise your creativity and and ask yourself, what do you want to draw? What a, what period of time do you want to draw in? What what location do you want to draw in? Have you always wanted to do something on a beach with beach imagery? Have you yeah. always wanted to do something at a park or an amusement park? Your, your location could be anywhere, but you need to write a story that makes sense out of that location and out of the, the action and what's actually happening, how, how people are reacting to Godzilla. You know, it could mm-hmm. be that Godzilla is tiny and, and people are huge. And this is a really, really tiny little baby God, maybe Godzilla has come out and they're like, you yeah. know, the size of a, of a chick, in, you know, or a little include that title in the uh, illustration too. Yeah. Um, and, and for those of you who did take uh, Children's Book Pro, this is a, a good opportunity to review our cover lecture that we did in that about children's book covers, because uh, we go in deep and hard on, on children's book covers. So I would definitely go go through, watch that lecture again, mm-hmm. and that'll get you all primed and ready for, for this assignment. Okay. Go forth and be creative, and we can't wait to see you next how to fix your art on it's going to be the third thursday of may whatever date that is right that's my birthday week and mine too when's your birthday again 17th yours is 21st first yeah Mm -hmm. all right all right thanks a lot guys for all the hard work everybody can't wait to see your next one